Hi right, gang, so today is a special day because it marks the first day of my recorded football session. Some of you may know, but I really, really want to take football to the next level and see where I can get with it. Now, the most important thing uh, that anyone who wants to be successful at something ridiculously hard, um, just like football or any industry where your chances of making it are like one in a million, you have to work a million times harder than everyone else. It, it, it's a fact. If you don't work harder than everyone else around you, you're not gonna be better than them. You're not gonna climb higher than them. So with that in mind, we need to be training, or should I say, I need to be training a lot, as much as I can. Weather's absolutely banging today, so I can't really complain. We're out here in the park, um, and we're gonna put a good solid session in. Gonna try and record most of my sessions when I'm in the park practicing, show you various drills, show you various things that I do uh, in hopes that it motivates some of you to really uh, look after yourselves or work really hard in whatever um, industry you're in or at the very least those of you that are also pursuing football you may learn a couple of things or a couple of drills that you may want to try out for yourself. We're going to start off with a little warm-up. Uh, I'm literally just going to do a few laps around the pit at, at, at high speed and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I'm blowing already. There you go, guys. One thing I want to mention is football, up until you get to quite a high level, uh, is really all about fitness and conditioning. <sighs> Growing up, I've seen so many awesome footballers in the town that I grew up in, players with real, real talent. But the reason most of them don't end up playing higher or end up climbing through the leagues in English football is because they never get themselves fit enough or, and work hard enough to really be able to handle the physical demand of the higher leagues, leagues. So realistically, all of these sessions, the main reason that I'm doing them is to really increase my fitness and also change my body composition. So yeah, looking at me like right now, you think, oh, what's wrong with the body composition? Now the thing is in football, carrying around muscle mass doesn't really help you with much. Um, something I thought I'd mention, like, yes, it's good to be really, really strong um, and you know maybe have a little bit of muscle so you're not getting wiped off the ball, but you don't wanna have too much on you because all it really does is slow you down. It makes it harder for you to be fit because every step you're taking every sprint that you're making you're having to carry more mass more mass which is more strain on the body so i'm looking to lose over the next 10 to 20 sessions i'm looking to lose as much body fat as i can uh, lose as much weight as i can and that will also include probably losing some muscle mass it's got to be done it's a sacrifice i've got to make in order to be able to compete at a higher level in football this goes without saying stretching is the most important part of doing any sport you've got to stretch every single muscle group that you can eight to ten seconds at least on each side uh super important and the last thing you want when training really hard, you know, five, six times a week is to be uh, injuring yourself. So yeah, make sure you always stretch, peeps. I always find my hamstring and my quads are always the most important for me to stretch. They're always the ones that um, tend to ache the next day uh, after a hard session if I've not stretched things properly. My most common stretching exercises is this and obviously reaching down and stretching. Most of the work that I'll be doing today is going to be focused on physical conditioning. Like I said, probably one of the most important parts of football. So a lot of um, the exercises that I'm going to be doing are going to be based on speed and explosiveness and also kind of like recovery rate. Because normally when you're fatigued, that's when everything that you do starts to be a lot worse. You're not going to pass as well. You're not going to dribble as well. You're not going to run at a high speed. So really it's about increasing every aspect of my physical conditioning and stamina that I can. Um, so I'm gonna set up an exercise. Most most of the time with my exercises, I just, I completely, I completely improvise. Like, I just take a look and think, okay, I'll just do this. I'm gonna be putting a cone in the, in the middle of the two goals, sorry. Every time that I come up to the cone, I've gotta do some form of a turn. The cone is gonna act as like a defender. As I'm coming to him, I've gotta do a little move, a skill move, um, a, a sharp turn to get around him. And then I'm gonna sprint around the goals as fast as I can. I'm gonna look to do five laps, take about a minute rest, so I guess. Okay.
maybe five laps was a bit ambitious. Fucking hell. Okay, we're gonna go till failure until I can't do anymore. So then how many laps that is. But we're gonna be doing three sets of this and then we'll switch on to another exercise. I'm telling you, it's an absolute killer to constantly be trying to run at your top speed while keeping the ball under control and dribbling while changing directions. The better and faster that I get at this, the more it's gonna help me absolutely break ankles on the football pitch. One thing that I do want to mention, and I always want, I always want you lot to remind yourselves of this. Even on the days that you feel really weak and tired and bloated, whatever, it's better to go and do a poor workout or a workout where you're really struggling and you, you won't necessarily fit your best. It's better than not doing, not doing a workout and skipping it. Right now, trust me, I'm pretty sure I've got COVID. My breathing's really bad, and I'm, I'm uh, more fatigued, way more fatigued than I normally am. But it's important to keep it going. All right, let's go. One more set. So we've done a lot of sprinting, a um, bit of explosive work. Um, so now we're gonna move on to a bit more technical work. Obviously, like I said, fitness is probably the most important thing in football. But second to that is uh, ball control. In football, it's ridiculously important to have very good control of the ball. The way you bring you down, your first touch is absolutely crucial. The way you control the ball, the way you open up uh, with the ball as you receive it, to bring it onto your next pass. All of this is really important. So this next exercise um, is gonna be really simple. I'm gonna keep kicking it against this metal wall, let's say, and the ball is gonna keep bouncing back to me now it's going to be very important for me to stay on my toes as it's coming back to me i've got to be able to receive it quick my job is to control the ball as fast as i can and release it preferably with my other foot and, and keep repeating the process as fast as i can smash it against the ball control it bring it back over and over and over yet again we're going to go to a failure i don't have a stopwatch or anything but i'm going to keep doing this exercise until my feet, legs feel very weak and heavy and i feel myself slowing down so this is honestly a really good exercise you can do this at home against the, your wall or any 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 wall any hard brick wall that you can find this it can help you develop your touch what's really important you need to be doing this in a football match you need to be on your toes when when you're gonna receive the ball so if i if i keep the ball against the wall my, my one of my feet is not able to receive it because i'm off, i'm off balance i wasn't on my toes however if i'm on my toes and i keep it i see the ball with any foot so always stay on your toes during this exercise One foot, release it with the other. If you want to challenge yourself, you can lift the ball off the ground a bit. In a real football match, you're not always going to receive the ball across the ground. It's going to bounce off the pitch. He's going to come up and do that. He can practice.
between any of these exercises that we're doing, I wouldn't recommend more than two minutes rest. Just like, just because I said, we really need to work on our endurance and our recovery rate. Make sure our bodies get used to getting back into the action nice and good. <sighs> Even if you're absolutely blowing out your ass like I am, push yourself through it and crack on. All right, in this next set, I'm gonna focus on picking the ball in the air against the wall so that when it comes back to me, I'm practicing my touch from an aerial pass. I'm practicing bringing the ball down and controlling it. The last set, I'm actually gonna focus on raw speed of passing. I'm not gonna bother about which foot I receive it on and release it on. Yeah, it's gonna be about just controlling and releasing as fast as I possibly can. So I'm gonna stand closer to the wall, less travel time between me and the wall of, of the ball. And yeah, this should make it harder to control. All right, so last bit, we're gonna finish, it up, finish off with some shooting. Um, if you're a midfielder or a striker, it's really important that you do practice your shooting a bit. Um, in an 11 a side match, I guess you don't really get to many shots, maybe unless you're a striker and you're getting the ball a lot. But basically what I'm trying to say is when you do get some shots, you need to make them count to so practice on your shooting. Now, most of the time in a competitive football match, you create your shooting chances in fast movements. So you'll have a defender in front of you, similar to the first exercise, that I was practicing where I was running at the cone and changing direction. That's basically what is gonna help with the shooting drill. So that bit of practice helps with uh, taking a touch to the side and getting your shot off in a match. This is what I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna set up a, I'm not even gonna set up a cone. I'm gonna visualize that there's a player in front of me. I'm gonna run to the side and I'm gonna get a shot off, get some power behind it, try and hit that small goal, hit the target. That's what we're gonna go for, right? If you have a friend with you, you could practice turning, receiving the ball, turning and then shooting, which is what a lot of strikers will do. You come short for the ball, receive it, turn, get your shot off. If you've got a friend that can like feed you the ball, pass it to you to do this exercise, that will help. Make sure, make sure you practice moving to the side and shooting with your weak foot. I know most people's weak foot sucks, but you need to practice it because in a game, you may not always be able to go into your preferred foot. So yeah, my uh, left foot is trash. <laughs> that shot was so bad that I've lost my fucking ball in the bush. I'll be right back. Okay, that was a prime example of why we train guys because you cannot do that in a game unless you want your manager to pull you off the pitch in about two minutes. So that was embarrassing. <laughs> Sharper though, uh, when you're dribbling with the left. I'm gonna call it a day there. Jesus, get over here. Yeah, I'm gonna call it a day there. Um, we worked on some really crucial aspects. Like I said, on a normal day, uh, I'd be breathing a lot better. 
I'll be a lot fitter. I don't know what's up with me today. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm suffering some side effects or whatever from when I had COVID. Nevertheless, I said it's better to go out and do something, even if it's 60%, 70% of your usual self. Better to do that than do absolutely nothing. So yeah, good little session. I hope you enjoyed my first ever little football training vlog. There's gonna be shit ton more to come. Let me know in the comment section down below what you'd like to see more of or what you would like me to do more. For example, I tried to explain as much as I could during this video i try to explain why i'm doing a certain exercise how i'm doing it how it will benefit me you know if you want some like more inside knowledge or you would rather just see some more action i show you some more drills show you more repetitions of stuff let me know in the comment section down below as always show the video some love if you've not already subscribed to the channel make sure you do so give it a thumbs up i appreciate all the feedback guys have a lovely day and i'll catch you in the next session